chocolate sharks. I have another book for you all this week. I know you've been talking to Mr. Jacobs about hurricanes, and I found this book in the library called A Storm Called Katrina. It was a hurricane that came a number of years ago to Louisiana, and it was devastating and flooded many, many people out of their homes. And I hope you enjoy this book. A storm called Katrina. Hurricanes coming, baby, Mama said. I'm not a baby anymore, Mama. I turned 10 last month. Doesn't matter how old you are, Louis Daniel. You'll always be my baby, she said. Now hush and go to bed. The wind rattled my window, something fierce. When the storm howled louder, I covered my ears and I hid under the blanket. I hugged my brass cornet close to my chest. I always felt better having it nearby. Someday I want to play just like Louis Daniel Armstrong, the greatest horn player ever. In the morning, I saw that the storm had blown down our big oak tree with the swing tire, with the tire swing. Mama's elephant ear plants were beaten flat to the ground. Will you look at that rain, Daddy said. Those drops are bigger than quarters. The wind slammed them sideways against the window. Daddy pulled me away from the glass, then the whole house shook. Don't worry now, Mama said. After some huffing and puffing, Katrina will blow away and land up the coast just like all those other hurricanes. But I couldn't stop worrying. Finally, the rain stopped and everything got real quiet. Daddy opened the door. The water's rising fast, he said. We gotta get out of here. Let me run and get a few things first, Mama said. Daddy shook his head. There's no time. It's already up to our front stoop. I grabbed my horn from the coffee table. No way I was gonna leave it behind. Outside, the world had turned upside down. Our whole block was filling up with water. Levees broke, a man behind us shouted. Everybody, head south. I held onto Mama and my horn as tight as I could. There he is. The water rose so high that we had trouble walking. Daddy grabbed a piece of someone's porch that was floating by and lifted me up onto it. I was glad because I was afraid we might run into a gator. I kept a real sharp watch just in case. Mama climbed up beside me and held me in her arms. Everything's going to be fine, baby, she said. I almost didn't mind her calling me baby just then. And here they're on that porch. And there's Daddy pulling off. As Daddy pushed us along, all kinds of things drifted by, even somebody's plastic Christmas tree. I saw a sad-looking dog standing on a bunch of boards. He had a red ball in his mouth. Daddy, I said, can we take him with us? No, Louis, he said. The dog wagged his tail like he wanted to play. He never stopped looking at me as we floated past. I sure felt sorry for that dog. He was in the same fix that we were. The water was up to Daddy's chest by now. The sky was so blue and bright, it hurt my eyes. Daddy pushed that big old piece of porch up one street and down the next. I tried to help by paddling with a broom that I pulled out of the water. A flatboat floated by. Got any room for us, Daddy called to the driver. Sorry, the man said, we are full. Please, mister, I said, there's a black and white dog back there. Can you take him? He's not very big. The man didn't answer. The boat just drifted away.
The murky brown water rose so high, Daddy had to climb up on the porch boat with Mama and me. That was when my broom hit a pile of clothes. Mama covered her eyes. Don't look, baby, she said, but I couldn't help looking. We rowed and paddled until we reached a place where the water wasn't as deep. Daddy jumped off and began to push us again. Finally, we felt the bottom of our boat scrape the ground. Mama and I got off too. Where do we go now, I asked. I don't know, baby, Mama said. We joined a long line of folks heading toward the Superdome. Everyone said we'd be safe. When we got closer, I could see that the storm had torn away part of the dome's big white roof. People were shouting and crowding toward the gates. A lady dragging a garbage bag full of stuff came up to us. I've lived around these parts for 50 years, she said, and I ain't never seen nothing like this. She hoisted the heavy bag over her shoulder. I just didn't reckon the storm would ever get this bad. Mama shook her head. Nobody did. The Superdome was a lot bigger inside than it looked on, on TV. Sunlight streamed through holes in the roof. Thousands of people were spread all over the place. The air was hot and sticky. Mama, Daddy, and me searched until we found an empty row of seats and then we sat down to wait. I was tired and hungry and I wished we could go home. I kept thinking about that little black and white dog. I wondered if he was all right. When the electricity went out, Mama, Daddy, and me huddled close together in the dark. I was scared, but I finally went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up from a bad dream about losing my cornet. I felt better when I saw that it was still tucked next to Mama, but I couldn't get back to sleep. Babies were crying and people were talking. Some folks were yelling at each other. The next day, it got even hotter. People had to wait in long lines for the bathrooms. When we finally got in, it smelled so bad I had to hold my breath. On the way back to our seats, we heard someone say that food and water was running out. Daddy thought he'd better hurry to try to find us something to eat and maybe some more water. Louis, he said, keep an eye on your mom. I'll be back as soon as I can. Daddy didn't come back all that afternoon. Two men in front of us started fighting over a bottle of water. The first man saw me watching them. Hey, boy, he said, eyeing the bottle in my hand. Give me that. Leave my son alone, Mama said. She stood up and hustled us right out of our seats. Come on, she said. We're going to sit somewhere else. But what about Daddy, I asked. I'm grabbing my cornet. He won't be able to find us. Yes, he will, baby, Mama said. Don't you worry. We waited in our new seats, then waited some more. My legs hurt from sitting so long. Mama seemed tired and worried, and I looked all around that huge dome. There are too many people crowded in this place, I thought. Daddy will never find us now. I picked up my coronet and fingered the shiny buttons. That's when I had the idea. Mama, I said, jumping up, I'll be right back. No, baby, you stay right here. But Mama, I know how to find Daddy. She looked at me hard, all right, but you come straight back. We're in section 145, row 23. Can you remember that? I nodded and I took off down the stairs. I hurried across the fake green grass and I stopped right in the middle of the field. I closed my eyes lifted my horn and played a song my granddaddy had taught me, Home Sweet Home. After I blew the last note, I stood there for a minute. A voice cut through all the noise in the Superdome. Louis, Louis Daniel! Daddy, 
he ran all the way down the steps from the top of the Superdome. He grabbed me up in his arms and he swung me around and around. I've looked all over this place, Daddy said. I thought I'd never find you. Where's your mama? Section 145, I answered, row 23. When we got back, Mama started to cry, but she was smiling at the same time. I'm so proud of you, Louis Daniel, she said. The buses are here, someone yelled. People pushed and shoved, trying to reach the doors. When we finally stepped outside, it was so bright, I had to blink a few times before I could see. And there was that black and white dog wagging his tail at me. Daddy, look, I cried. Please, please, can we keep him? Louis, we can't take a dog with us, he said. The buses are for people. Who says we're going on any bus, Mama said. Daddy looked at her for a long time, and then he smiled. Come on, boy, I said. We're going home. That dog looks very playful, I think. In the very back of this book, they talk about Hurricane Katrina, and they talked about how it happened in August 29th, 2005, the same day as Hurricane Laura's, Laura struck. That's about the same area, and people were flooded out. Levees are mounds of dirt that hold the water back. So in this case, for Katrina, the levees had broken and flooded the entire area. I hope you enjoyed this book, A Storm Called Katrina. When we get back to school, if you'd like, you can check it out from the library. I hope everybody has a good day, and tune in next week for our, more stories from Miss Ann.